uh, showing, in this case, now we're in the wet season. The, the dark green is the millet uh, fields, the millet production. And the white um, is the canopies of these trees, which are bare of leaves in the, in the wet season. And I might mention that, although I'm not showing any slides, um, these, these trees, because they are dormant in the wet season, are also very adapted to wetland conditions. And in fact, have been tested very successfully in uh, South Asia and West Africa for wetland rice production systems as well. What would be the impact, in fact, if um, these systems were used on larger areas of food crop production, from the few million hectares to perhaps the 50 million hectares of food crop agriculture in Africa? A question that the Vice President of Tanzania asked when he came to visit us to talk about these systems uh, a few months ago. And this slide uh, represents our conservative an uh, analysis, our estimate of what the economic value would be. In terms of the value of nitrogen fertilizers produced by the trees, it would therefore not be necessary to import into Tanzania, and the additional maize production to be expected. So evergreen agriculture, as we're defining it currently, is a form of more intensified farming that integrates trees into food crop systems in compatible ways to either directly increase the productivity of the food crops or the income of the farmers through other cash generating, um, uh, uh, cash generating enterprises. So evergreen agriculture um, is, is an agriculture that keeps the ground green and covered throughout the year. There are many different examples of evergreen agriculture, and I just threw up a few here to give you a sprinkling of those types of systems that are, that are quite common in some parts of the tropics where we work. But uh, there are many, many more such systems as well, dealing with fertilizer trees, fruit trees, timber trees, cash crop trees, fodder trees, and others integrated directly into food crop production systems. So in summary, what are the repercussions of evergreen agriculture? I think uh, we can look for um, a, um, a, a utility of these systems in increasing the nutrient availability in rain-fed systems, um, that is increasing soil organic matter as well as the nutrient content of soils, increased and more stable food crop production, improved microclimate, which happens to be the major effect in the Sahelian zone, uh, protection from the harmattan, dramatically increased carbon accumulation, and our estimates are from six to 10 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent uh, per hectare per year accumulated with such systems. And those of you familiar with conservation agriculture, generally it's 0.1 to 0.4 tons per hectare under the best conditions. Enhanced biodiversity, um, another major effect when you, when you have landscapes of monoculture food crops now being transformed into agroforest systems, you can now look at corridors vastly increased amounts of habitats and niches for uh, wildlife and other species. And then reduced deforestation due to the enhanced potential of rain-fed agriculture to produce higher yields and to produce the products that cause um, the deforestation to be, uh, to be going on in smallholder agriculture. Well, I want to finish up now by um, stimulating those of you who are interested or would be interested in this topic to look at some of the key research and development focal areas, um, areas that we know can be very effective in further enhancing the acceleration of these processes. Fortunately, the big breakthrough we've had in the last 10 years is the development of mass propagation systems for these trees to enable farmers in extension programs to, in fact, very easily propagate them in their fields. But we need policy reform and government support, institutional innovations, and quality germplasm as we look forward to getting better and better um, uh, tree performance um, in the future. Well, finally, um, for those uh, interested in more information, um, I have uh, provided a few copies of a, of a paper that just came out in Food Security that's a major review of evergreen agriculture, just published this month. And uh, you can feel free to contact us. Uh, we're really looking to build partnerships, alliances, to expand this. Currently, um, NAPAD, the African Union, and the CADAP are big supporters of the development of conservation agriculture with agroforestry. And we're now working with 18 countries to uh, develop their national programs and work plans to accelerate the use of these systems. 
And fortunately, in all of these countries, farmers are already using the system. So it's a matter of basically building on a traditional practice that could be uh, a, a real major way of the future. Thank you very much.